Parthiknut, Harthiknut, or Canute the Third, was king of Denmark from 1035 to 1042 and king of England from 1040 to 1042. He was the son of King Cnut the Great and Emma of Normandy. When Cnut died in 1035, Harthiknut struggled to retain his father's possessions. Magnus I took control of Norway. But Harthacnut succeeded as King of Denmark and became King of England in 1040 after the death of his half-brother Harold Harefoot. Harthacnut died suddenly in 1042 and was succeeded by Magnus in Denmark and Edward the Confessor in England. Harthacnut was the last Scandinavian to rule England. Early life Harthacnut was born shortly after the marriage of his parents in July or August 1017. CNUT had put aside his first wife Eilf Gifu of Northampton to marry Emma, and according to the encomium Emma Regina, a book she inspired many years later, CNUT agreed that any sons of their marriage should take precedence over the sons of his first marriage. In 1023, Emma and Harthacnut played a leading role in the translation of the body of the martyr Saint Eilfha from London to Canterbury an occasion seen by Harthacnut's biographer, Ian Howard, as recognition of his position as a CNUT's heir in England, King of Denmark. In the 1020s, Denmark was threatened by Norway and Sweden, and in 1026, CNUT decided to strengthen its defences by bringing over his eight-year-old son to be the future king under a council headed by his brother-in-law, Earl Ulf. However, Ulf alienated CNUT by getting the Danish provinces to acknowledge Harthacnut as king without reference to CNUT's overall authority and by failing to take vigorous measures to meet Norwegian and Swedish invasions instead waiting for CNUT's assistance. In 1027, CNUT arrived with a fleet. He forgave Harthacnut's insubordination in view of his youth but had Ulf murdered. He drove the invaders out of Denmark and established his authority over Norway, returning to England in 1028 and leaving Denmark to be ruled by King Harthacnut. CNUT had left Norway under the rule of Haak and Eriksson, but he was drowned in 1029, and CNUT appointed his son Sven to rule Norway with the assistance of Eilf Gifu, CNUT's first wife and Sven's mother. However, they made themselves unpopular by heavy taxation and favouring Danish advisers over the Norwegian nobles, and when King Magnus I of Norway, the son of the former King of Norway, Olaf, invaded in 1035, they were forced to flee to Harthacnut's court. Harthacnut was a close ally of Sven, but he did not feel his resources were great enough to launch an invasion of Norway, and the half-brothers looked for help from their father, but instead they received news of his death in November 1035. England and Denmark in 1035, Harthacnut succeeded his father on the throne of Denmark as a CNUT3. He was unable to come to England in view of the situation in Denmark, and it was agreed that Sven's full brother, Harold Harefoot, should act as regent, with Emma holding Wessex on Harthacnut's behalf. In 1037, Harold was generally accepted as king, Harthacnut being, in the words of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, forsaken because he was too long in Denmark, while Emma fled to Bruges in Flanders. In 1039, Harthacnut sailed with ten ships to meet to his mother in Bruges but delayed an invasion as it was clear Harold was sick and would soon die, which he did in March 1040. Envoys soon crossed the channel to offer Harthacnut the throne, while the general outline of events following CNUT's death are clear, the details are obscure, and historians give differing interpretations. M. K. Lawson in his Dictionary of National Biography article on Harthacnut states that it is unclear whether Harthacnut was to have England as well as Denmark, but it was probably a reflection of a formal arrangement that mints south of the Thames produced silver pennies in his name, while those to the north were almost all Harold's. 
There might have been a division of the kingdom if Harthacnut had appeared straight away. He probably stayed in Denmark because of the threat from Magnus of Norway, but they eventually made a treaty by which if either died without an heir, his kingdom would go to the other, and this may have freed Harthacnut to pursue his claim to England. According to Ian Howard, Harthacnut agreed to help Sven recover Norway and planned an invasion in 1036. Sven died shortly before it was to set out, but Harthacnut proceeded anyway. War was avoided by the treaty between Harthacnut and Magnus, which Harthacnut agreed to because he had no plausible candidate to rule Norway after Sven's death, and he was in any case temperamentally inclined to avoid campaigns and wars. Howard dates the treaty to 1036, whereas other historians date it to 1039 and believe it freed Tarthacnut to launch an invasion of England. In exile in Bruges, Emma plotted to gain the English throne for her son. She sponsored the encomium Emma Regina, which eulogized her and attacked Harold, especially for arranging the murder of Alfred Atheling in 1036. The work describes Harthacnut's horror at hearing of his brother's murder, and in Howard's view, was probably influential in finally persuading the cautious Harthacnut to invade England. According to a later edition of the Encomium, the English took the initiative in communicating with Harthacnut in 1039. Possibly when they became aware that Harold had not long to live, King of England Harthacnut travelled to England with his mother, the landing at Sandwich on 17 June 1040, seven days before midsummer, was a peaceful one, though he had a fleet of 62 warships. Even though he had been invited to take the throne, he was taking no chances and came as a conqueror with an invasion force. The crews had to be rewarded for their service, and to pay them, he levied a geld of more than £21,000. Harthacnut had been horrified by Harold's murder of Alfred, and his mother demanded vengeance. With the approval of Harold's former counsellors, his body was disinterred from its place of honour at Westminster and publicly beheaded. It was disposed of in a sewer, but then retrieved and thrown in the Thames, from which London's shipmen rescued it and had it buried in a churchyard. Godwin, the powerful Earl of Wessex, had been complicit in the crime as he had handed over Alfred to Harold, and Queen Emma charged him in a trial before Harthacnut and members of his council. The king allowed Godwin to escape punishment by bringing witnesses that he had acted on Harold's orders. But Godwin then gave Harthacnut a ship so richly decorated that it amounted to the Wur Guild that Godwin would have had to pay if he had been found guilty. Bishop Lifing of Worcester was also charged with complicity in the crime and deprived of his see. But in 1041 he made his peace with Harthacnut and was restored to his position. The English had become used to the king ruling in council, with the advice of his chief men, but Harthacnut had ruled autocratically in Denmark, and he was not willing to change, particularly as he did not fully trust the leading earls. At first he was successful intimidating his subjects, though less so later in his short reign. He doubled the size of the English fleet from 16 to 32 ships partly so that he had a force capable of dealing with trouble elsewhere in his empire, and to pay for it he severely increased the rate of taxation. The increase coincided with a poor harvest, causing severe hardship. In 1041, two of his tax gatherers were so harsh in dealing with people in and around Worcester that they rioted and killed the tax gatherers. Harthacnut reacted by imposing a then legal but very unpopular punishment known as harrying. He ordered his earls to burn the town and kill the population. Very few people were killed, however, as they knew what was coming and fled in all directions. The Earl of Northumbria was seaward, but early Wolf of Bernicia ruled the northern part in semi-independence a situation which did not please the autocratic Harthacnut. In 1041 early Wolf gave offence to the king for an unknown reason but then sought reconciliation. Harthacnut promised him safe conduct but then colluded in his murder by Seward, who became Earl of the whole of Northumbria. 
the crime was widely condemned, and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle described it as a betrayal, and the king as an oath-breaker. Harthacnut was generous to the church. Very few contemporary documents survive, but a royal charter of his transferred land to Bishop Eilfwine of Winchester, and he made several grants to Ramsey Abbey. The 12th century Ramsey Chronicle speaks well of his generosity and of his character. Harthacnut had suffered from bouts of illness even before he became King of England. He may have suffered from tuberculosis, and he probably knew that he had not long to live. In 1041 he invited his half-brother Edward the Confessor back from exile in Normandy and probably made him his heir. He may well have been influenced by Emma, who hoped to keep her power by ensuring that one of her sons was succeeded by another. Harthacnut was unmarried and had no known children. Death On 8 June 1042, Harthacnut attended a wedding in Lambeth. The groom was Tovey the Proud, former standard bearer to CNUT, and the bride was Gytha, daughter of the courtier Osgode Clapper. Harthacnut presumably consumed large quantities of alcohol. As he was drinking to the health of the bride, he died as he stood at his drink, and he suddenly fell to the earth with an awful convulsion, and those who were close by took hold of him, and he spoke no word afterwards. The likely cause of death was a stroke, brought about by an excessive intake of alcohol, though in the death of kings. A Medical History of the Kings and Queens of England, Clifford Brewer suggested a cardiac arrest as the immediate cause of death. Harthacnut was buried at Oldminster in Winchester, his father's place of rest. His mother donated a valuable relic, the head of St. Valentine to Newminster, her offer for the salvation of his soul. In 1052, Emma herself was buried at Oldminster. Her surviving son, Edward the Confessor, had assumed the throne on Harthacnut's death, restoring the Saxon royal line of the House of Wessex. A contradictory account in the Neatlinger saga reports Harthacnut buried in the city of Moors Tr. Alongside his half-brother Harold Harefoot and the father Cnut, while mentioned as a great city in the text, nothing else is known of Moors Tr. The Heim Skringler by Snorra Sturluson reports Harthacnut buried at Winchester, alongside Cnut and Harold Harefoot. Ian Howard speculates that Harthacnut could have been suffering from a terminal illness, such as tuberculosis, something known to himself and his court for a while. This would explain why Emma turned her attention to her other son, Edward, why Magnus seriously expected to succeed the rival king, and why Henry III was eager to have a connection to the Danish monarch. While Harthacnut was fairly young, several people were interested in designating an heir for him, as if the young man was already dying and was not expected to have sons of his own. Alan R. Rushton notes that Harthacnut was son to Emma of Normandy, and that there was a pattern of sudden deaths among descendants of the House of Normandy. In 1027, Richard III, Duke of Normandy, died with no apparent reason. Widespread rumours suggested that his brother and heir, Robert I, Duke of Normandy, had him poisoned. Robert I himself went on pilgrimage to Jerusalem. In 1035, Robert died in Nicaea, Bithynia during his return journey. A contemporary chronicler suspected poisoning as the reason behind the sudden death. In 1040, their cousin Alan III, Duke of Brittany, died of unexplained causes. Again poison was suspected as the reason. In 1066, his son Conan II, Duke of Brittany, also died of unexplained causes. His cousin William the Conqueror was suspected of having him poisoned. Rushton notes that the historians for centuries believed that poison was indeed the most likely explanation behind an otherwise unexplained death. He speculates, however, that the actual cause could be a hereditary disease, an autosomal dominant pattern. He admits that William the Conqueror, another descendant of this dynasty, generally enjoyed good health but points out that William fell seriously ill following the Battle of Hastings, resting for a month near Canterbury. He then had to return to Normandy for further medical attention. 
His health problems were attributed to a combination of exhaustion, dysentery, and chronic gout. Twenty years later, William was incapacitated by abdominal colic, supposedly caused by the bow of his saddle. He rested in a monastery near Rouen for three weeks, then died. Symptoms of his last days included a fever and a marked sensitivity to noise. Rushton suspects that William himself could have been suffering from an unknown ailment. On the other hand, David C. Douglas had pointed out that allegations of secret poisoning were rather common in the primary sources from 11th century Normandy. Any writer on Norman affairs attributed to venom any sudden death, except those involving violence. Surprisingly, these allegations were rare in sources from 11th century England, even when the sudden deaths would justify the suspicion. He noted that the deaths of Harthic Nutt, Godwin, Earl of Wessex, and Edward the Exile formed a suspect pattern, though the primary sources were silent on the subject. He believes that if the deaths had occurred in the Duchy of Normandy, the matter would be seen in a different light. Kelly de Vries noted that while Douglas implied that Harthic Nut was poisoned, he did not further explore the notion, never mentioning potential murderers or their motivation. Sten Corner also noted that the death of Harthic Nut could be part of a plot, but also did not further explore the notion, though the implication would be that Edward the Confessor was behind this plot. In The Death of Kings, A Medical History of the Kings and Queens of England, Clifford Brewer pointed that Edward benefited from the sudden death of Harthic Nutt and that while Godwin, Earl of Wessex, was the father-in-law to Edward, he had once led an uprising against his son-in-law. He died suddenly after dining with said son-in-law, again pointing suspicion at Edward as the probable culprit behind both deaths. Catherine Holman was certain that Harthic Nut was poisoned but felt that the culprit will never be known with certainty due to no shortage of discontented candidates. Succession The political agreement between Harthic Nut and Magnus I of Norway included the appointment of the latter as heir to Harthic Nut. At the time, the agreement would have only affected the throne of Denmark. The Heim Skringler reports that when Harthic Nut died, Magnus extended his claim to England. He reportedly sent a letter to Edward the Confessor, pressing his claim to the English throne and threatening invasion. His own heir, Harold Hardrada, would also press this claim. Both considered themselves legal heirs to Harthic Nut. The fake Skinner contains a scene where Magnus proclaims that, I will take possession of all the Danish Empire or else die in the attempt, according to the encomium. Edward the Confessor already served as co-ruler of England since 1041. There is an emphasis on Harthic Nut, Edward, and Emma serving as a trinity of rulers, in emulation of the Holy Trinity. Edward, by surviving his co-ruler, would be king by default. The Heim Skringler depicts Edward portraying himself as brother and legal heir to both Harold Harefoot and Harthic Nut, while pointing out that he had already won the support of all the people of the country. Unstated in both is that the marriage of Edward to Edith of Wessex would also support his claim by earning him both the political support of her father Godwin and an additional connection to CNUT. She was a niece to the king. The fake Skinner has Edward point out that he was the son of Ethelred the Unready and Emma of Normandy, the brother to Edmund Ironside the stepson of CNUT, the stepbrother of Harold Harefoot, and the half-brother of Harthic Nut. In short, he had a much stronger family claim to the throne than Magnus. All the leaders of England had already acknowledged him as their king, and he was consecrated by an archbishop. England was his own heritage. Whether Magnus managed to defeat him in war or not, you can never be called king in England, and you will never be granted any allegiance there before you put an end to my life. This was supposedly enough to cause Magnus to doubt the strength of his own claim. The marriage agreement between Gunhilda of Denmark and Henry III, Holy Roman Emperor, would allow descendants of this marriage to claim the throne of Denmark and potentially of England. 
The marriage, from Henry's perspective, was probably orchestrated to allow the Holy Roman Empire to claim control of Denmark and the western areas of the Baltic Sea. However, Gunhilda had died in 1038 with no known sons. Her only daughter was Beatrice I, abbess of Quedlinburg, who never married. If Harthacnut was known to be dying from an illness, the early attempts of several people to regulate his succession could be seen in a different light. It appears that sudden death was actually long expected.